This video focuses on finding the domain of a function. The definition of the domain is a set of all real numbers for which the expression is defined. So we have some different examples of how you find domain. The first example is when you're given some ordered pairs. So x comma f of x. So the ordered pairs are 0 comma 1 and then 1 comma 3 and 2 comma 5. The domain are going to be the blue pieces. What is the x values? So here's 1, 0, 1, and 2. So there's your domain, 0, 1, 2. Let's just go a step further and just graph out these ordered pairs. So the first ordered pair, 0, 1. So we're going to go right to 0 and then up 1. And then the next ordered pair, 1, 3, we'll go over 1 up 3, and then the next order pair will go over 2, up 5. And that's how you can graph a set of order pairs that is a relation. And the domain are the x values. The second example is, let's say we give you a function, and this function is f of x equals x squared plus 3, and we want to find out what the domain is. Well, one way is to graph out and read the function or just start pl plugging in some values for x. So let's try and plug in for 0. So we say f of 0, 0 squared plus 3 is 0 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. So we get the ordered pair 0, 3. This is also going to be our critical point. Then let's plug in 1. So we replace the x with 1. So 1 times 1 is 1, plus 3 is 4. So we get the order pair over 1, up 4. And what happens is you get this parabola it has some symmetry, and the domain are what type of numbers can you plug in for x? If you remember um, the parent function for a parabola, it doesn't have any domain restrictions on it. It's all real numbers. And so we'd say then the domain is all real numbers, or another way you can write it as negative infinity to infinity. Here are a couple more examples of finding the domain. One is with a rational function and one is with a radical. They have some problems that exist when you have radicals and rational functions. This first function, f of x equals 1 over x squared minus 9, if I go ahead and factor this out in the denominator of x minus 3 and x plus 3 using the difference of 2 squared method of factoring, Notice what happens if you substitute a positive 3 into here or a negative 3 into here. Each of those um, parentheses would become 0. And anything over 0 in the denominator, which is what we call undefined. So you have domain restrictions at 3 and negative 3. So you'd say all reals except x cannot be 3 and negative 3. And if you want to take the time to go ahead and graph this out with your graphing calculator, you'll notice these will become vertical asymptotes on your graph. This second example here on this slide is radical function. There's some issues that pop up when you have radicals. You cannot have a negative radical. It becomes an imaginary number. So if we were to go ahead and graph this function with our graphing calculator, the function would look like this. And that's what it looks like. You take the time to enter this into your graphing calculator. Well, the domain restriction is what type of numbers can you plug in for x? So if I create a vertical line here and negative 3, Anything to the right of that green vertical negative 3 exists. 
So we'd say the domain restriction can be anything greater than or equal to negative 3. If I plug in negative 4 in, so let's try this in this radical. So I'd say negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Square root of negative 1 does not exist. So anything to the left of that vertical line does not exist. The domain is x is greater than or equal to negative 3.